Today we're going to be starting a series of video lessons looking at the book of Ecclesiastes. Now when we study the book of Ecclesiastes there's a lot of wisdom that we can find in here that we can apply to our lives here in the time that we're living in. But in this series what we're going to do is just look at some highlights and see what we can take and what we can apply for us today. As we think about the times that we're living in and the situations that exist around us. Over the past year or so, we've heard a lot about people talking about how we are living in unprecedented times. And we've heard that word a lot, that word unprecedented. And it's understandable why we would think about our current situation that way. Because for a, for a lot of us, it does seem like this is unprecedented. It seems like this hasn't happened before. And the reason for that is because we've never experienced anything like this before. But as we look here in this lesson today, we're going to be looking at the first 11 verses of Ecclesiastes chapter 1. The wise man explains here, there's nothing that's truly unprecedented when we look at the grand scheme of things. When we look at everything around us, we need to recognize that there is, as he's going to say in these verses, nothing new under the sun. Notice what he says here in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. He says, The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What advantage does man have in all the work which he does under the sun? So he's starting here painting a pretty bleak picture about our existence. Where he says, everything is vanity. What is the advantage or what is the purpose for all of the work and all the effort that we're doing? And at some point, all of us feel this way. We feel like, well, what's, what's the use in what I'm doing? That I'm not making a difference. It doesn't seem like anything is changing or anything is getting better. Everything is vanity. Everyone feels this way at some point. Notice what he continues as he goes on and talks about the conditions that exist here. He says in verse 4, A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. Also the sun rises and the sun sets, and hastening to its place it rises there again. Blowing toward the south and turning toward the north, the wind continues swirling along. On its circular courses the wind returns. All the rivers flow into the sea, and yet the sea is not full. To the place where the rivers flow, there they flow again. You have these cycles that continue where you have you have a generation comes and a generation goes. The sun rises, the sun sets. The wind blows and continues to blow. The rivers flow to the sea. The sea's not full. The rivers continue to flow. Everything continues. There is this cycle that exists to life. There's nothing new under the sun. Whatever it is that we're facing, whatever it is that we're experiencing, from our perspective, well, this seems unprecedented. There have been a lot of changes that have happened this year. Sun continues to come up, sun continues to go down, the wind continues to blow, the rivers continue to flow, one generation comes and, and another generation goes, and everything continues. So then the wise man goes on as he painting this picture about the cyclical nature of life, that all of these things continue, everything goes on from generation to generation. He says in verse 8, all things are wearisome. Man is not able to tell it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. That we recognize there's something that we're missing something. There's something more than what we're experiencing because there's nothing new. Everything is the same. That the world does not change in any real sense. Yes, we can look at our experiences and see that, well, it seems like things are different. But basically, everything's the same. There's nothing new under the sun. And so, he says, man is not satisfied. Man is looking for something more, for something beyond just what he experiences here. Verse 9, he says, that which has been is that which will be, and that which has been done is that which will be done. So there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one might say, see this, it is new. Already it has existed for ages which were before us. There is no remembrance of earlier things and also of the later things which will occur for there will be for there 
there will be for them no remembrance among those who will come later still. So we think about, well, things are, seem so different now, where we have this situation or that situation. There have always been conditions like what we experience. As our experience and what we have seen, are things seem to be new? Maybe. But there's always been death. There's always been trouble. There's always been turmoil. There's always been strife. There's always been people in positions of power who try to abuse that power. There's always times where people try to take advantage of other people. These things continue. They might take a different form that we haven't experienced before, but these things are not new. There's nothing new under the sun. So he's wanting to set the stage here to explain to us that whatever we're experiencing, it's not something that has never been experienced before. It's not something that is new. All is vanity. All continues from one generation to another, and there's nothing new under the sun. Now, that is a pretty depressing picture. When we think about where where we are and what we're doing and why we're here, and we think, what is the point? Well, as we study the book of Ecclesiastes, we're going to see the point. He's going to get to there as he explains all of this. We're going to see what the point is, but we need to start here. We need to recognize that if we're looking at things, life under the sun, the things on this earth, it is ultimately pointless. There's nothing new. There's nothing that we can say, well, here, this is something new. This is something different. This is something better. This is something that will give meaning to our existence. No, there's nothing new under the sun. We need to understand that if we're looking for purpose, we're looking for meaning, it's not going to be here with the things that we see around us. There is purpose. There is meaning. We have a reason why we're here, and we will see that as we study the book of Ecclesiastes, but we need to start here. We need to recognize that it's not in the things that are here on the earth. It's not in the things that are temporary. Because these things continue from generation to generation. We live here for a short period of time. Then we're going to be gone and we're going to be forgotten. And everything we experience now that we think, well, this is unprecedented. That's going to be forgotten just as we are forgotten. We need to understand that we need to look beyond this life. Because if we're looking here, at life under the sun, then all is vanity.